Hey, Chief's Kingdom. This one was a no-brainer. It's just been confirmed. I'll give you the lowdown on what went down behind the scenes, but if you want to stay up to date with all of this and other news, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Without further ado, let's get right to the news. We have a big roster move to talk about today. Clyde Edwards Hilaire is officially back. The Chiefs just activated him from the reserve slash NFI list, and it's got everyone talking. So here's the lowdown. Clyde was placed on the reserve slash non-football injury list right before the season opener against the Baltimore Ravens. You may recall that the team said he was dealing with an illness during training camp, but it turns out there was a lot more going on. Back in August, Clyde opened up to reporters about his struggles with PTSD, which stems from a traumatic event while he was at LSU. It's a heavy story. He and a teammate were involved in a situation where they had to defend themselves during a robbery, and unfortunately, someone lost their life. It's something that clearly impacted him deeply, and he's been working on it. But now, he's back and ready to go. The Chiefs designated him to return two weeks ago, which gave him time to practice with the team without taking up a roster spot. Today, they made it official, Clyde is back on the active roster, and we all hope to see him in action soon. The Chiefs didn't have to make any other roster moves to bring Clyde back, as they had an open spot on the 53-man roster. With him back, the team now has a full active roster, plus 17 players on the practice squad. And for those keeping track, the team still has about $3.6 million in cap space to work with, which is good news as we head into the season. Now, the big question is, what does this mean for our running game? Clyde has been through a lot. But if he's fully healthy, he could be a huge asset to our offense. He's had some ups and downs in his career so far, but we all know what he's capable of when he's at the top of his game. What do you think, Chiefs fans? Are you excited to see Clyde back on the field? Do you think he'll return to form and make an impact in the backfield? Let me know what you think in the comments below. Now, Let's get right to what's going on with our Chiefs, particularly Andy Reid and Patrick Mahomes as they navigate an injury-plagued start to the 2024 NFL season. After just five weeks, the Chiefs have already been hit hard by injuries, especially on offense. Both Marquise Brown and Rassie Rice, two of Mahomes' top targets, are out, leading the team scrambling for solutions. But here's where it gets interesting. Rather than looking outside the organization for help, the Chiefs are confident in the talent they have. Before signing Kareem Hunt, yes, the familiar face from the Chiefs' past, they were already replacing the injured Isaiah Pacheco with Carson Steele and Samich Perrine in the backfield. But when it comes to the passing game, a new name is emerging, rookie wide receiver Xavier Worthy. Now, if you've been following along, you know that Worthy, fresh off his release from Texas, has already made an impact in his short time with the Chiefs. And while head coach Andy Reid is happy with what he's seen so far, he thinks there's plenty more to come from the young wideout. I think Xavier has done a good job for us, Reid said earlier this week. He does a lot of things out there for us, a lot of different positions. We have the flexibility with him to move him around. He's a quick learner, which helps this offense. I don't think we've taken advantage of that at all. He's going to continue to get better, and that's exciting. It sounds like Reed has high hopes for Worthy, right? And why not? The kid has already shown flashes of brilliance. But here's the big question for all of us. Can Worthy fill in for Mahomes' favorite targets now that Rice is likely out for the season? Yep. You heard that right, Rice, who has been one of Mahomes' top weapons this year, is expected to miss the rest of the season, and Brown isn't expected to return any time soon either. That puts that much more pressure on Worthy to step up. But don't worry, Reed has made it clear that he's not planning on putting the entire burden of the passing game on Worthy's shoulders. He even told Mahomes that he doesn't want the rookie to be the sole focus of the offense and the Chiefs' Week 5 win over the New Orleans Saints on Monday Night Football showed that they have options. In that game, it was veteran wideout Juju Smith-Schuster who stood out the most, catching seven passes for 130 yards. Chiefs returner Kareem Hunt also had a monster game with 102 yards and a touchdown on 27 carries. 
As for Worthy, his stat line was a little quieter, three catches for 25 yards, but he also found the end zone with a three-yard rushing touchdown. So far this season, Worthy has been targeted 21 times, making 12 catches for 179 yards and two receiving touchdowns. Not bad for a rookie, right? But the real question is, can he continue to develop and become Mahomes' most reliable target as the season progresses? Coach Reed seems confident that Worthy's best days are ahead of him, and with the Chiefs' offensive flexibility, they don't need to rush him into a leadership role just yet. But let's be honest, with injuries piling up, the team will need him to contribute more as the season progresses. So, what do you guys think? Is Xavier Worthy ready to take on a bigger role with Mahomes and the offense? Or do you think the Chiefs need to make another move to help ease the burden on the rookie? We have something fun to talk about today. Patrick Mahomes just confirmed a rumor that's been going around about none other than pop sensation Taylor Swift. If you've been following the Chiefs lately, you know that Swift has been getting pretty close to the team, especially since she's been dating Travis Kelsey. Well, it turns out she's not just a successful singer, she's also got some serious skills in the kitchen. In a recent interview on 96.5 The Fan, Mahomes shared that Swift has even bonded with his family, especially his wife Brittany and daughter Sterling. And get this, Taylor and Sterling have been baking together. Mahomes said, she's made different treats that are in my house, like muffins and donuts and stuff like that. Sterling's also a big baker, so they do some stuff together sometimes. I'm not going to say I don't eat them. It seems even our MVP can't resist Taylor's sweet treats. Apparently, Swift is just as talented in the kitchen as she is on stage. Mahomes was super impressed and said she's as good as everyone says when it comes to baking. Can you imagine stopping by the Mahomes house and being greeted with Taylor Swift's homemade muffins? Not bad, right? And that's not all. When Swift first started dating Kelsey, she even baked Pop-Tarts for the Chiefs' offensive linemen. They must have been amazing because Pop-Tarts, the brand, took notice. They actually took out a full-page ad in a Kansas City newspaper asking for Taylor's secret recipe. The ad hilariously read, We're tortured that we don't know more about this DIY treat. What's the filling? Is there frosting? Do they have little holes? It seems like everyone is trying to get in on Swift's baking magic. So there you have it, Patrick Mahomes has officially confirmed the rumor, and it looks like Taylor Swift isn't just impressing the Chiefs on the sidelines, she's making her mark in the kitchen, too. But what do you guys think? Are you surprised by this side of Swift? I want to hear your thoughts, so drop a comment below. And before you go, Make sure to hit that like button and subscribe so you don't miss any updates on your Kansas City Chiefs. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video. Go Chiefs!